going on folks stove the hobo here in Dilworth Minnesota on September 21st first day of fall and uh, for today's episode this week's episode we're going to be featuring the High Line from Fargo Dilworth area to Whitefish Montana so um, as you can see it's a decent sized train yard here and there's not a lot of cover we got the main lines uh, where this coal empty is sitting. Those main lines are where the, the westbounds are going to pull in. So, got a really, not a lot of cover here. I think I'm decent. It's a Sunday, which is good, so there shouldn't be a lot of workers around in there. So there's a junction ahead, right at Fargo, basically, where trains can go either to uh, Billings on the low line, or the High Line, which goes up into North Dakota. Well, they both go to North Dakota, but the High Line goes to Minot and then Glasgow. It kind of goes through that back in oil region. In order to be sure I get the right train out of here, I'm gonna need to get a train with double stack containers because out of here, those only go to Seattle or Portland, meaning they're guaranteed to take the High Line. There's definitely some risk out here hanging out with a pack. There's basically no good reason why you'd be out here. I haven't seen any workers, but you know, you got this tower here and he's got uh, some kind of a camera apparatus. I don't know if it's on or if they're watching it, but either way, it's probably best done at night, but it's 10 in the morning and that would mean waiting another, you know, almost 10 hours. So, probably just gonna sit here and see what happens in these trees would be a better spot once I've determined that I mean basically anyone seeing me on this road with a pack I could go through this guy's soy field but that's not very considerate and he might see me so I have to go up this road middle of the daytime to those trees and then it should be safe the main line should be right there and then uh, access to rail cars when the next westbound pulls in. Hour later here, we've got the second back in oil region empty oil train coming in from the east. Uh, it's going on the high line, but I mean, looking at those tanks, where are you gonna ride? Coincidentally enough, stacks on these rail cars. Oh well, let's keep waiting. Uh, here you got a stack coming in, but it's behind this train that's got a crew on it. So, it means there's gonna be some risk of those guys gonna have to be in sight of that engine. Down there, there he comes. So technically, the guys in the front engine might be able to see running across this field over to this car. Wait until the air goes, you hear the air hiss, and it starts moving and just run over and get on. If they see me now, well, the cops would probably come and bother me, which I don't really got, my hiding place is gone. I really wish those rides had pulled up back by that big tree trunk I was hiding behind. The train's taking a little long to take off more than I thought, but these soy plants at least have nice ripe beans in them. Which is a good food source, being that I'm kind of low on grub. So this is Dilworth still. Right, uh, it's across the river from Fargo. Nothing too interesting, just strip mall crap going on. Um, just a second, we'll be crossing the Red River into North Dakota and Fargo, which looks a little more interesting. And then to Fargo, Fargo, North Dakota. Here's Fargo. Yeah, it's just, it had that movie named after it and stuff. It's not a terribly interesting town. I thought about coming up here, but it's like an eight mile walk from the train yard. There's the Red River, not too big a deal, it flooded a couple years ago. 
this is now the border into North Dakota. So far we've been going basically due west. And at this junction here we're going to start going uh, a little bit more northwest. Off to the left here. This is where it trains to uh, Billings. Train's currently stopping here to let this empty green back off the main line and reload up ahead, I believe, in quite a big silo. It's pretty important, uh, pretty much I would not get on an empty grain train anywhere around here. As the chances of being dropped at a silo are pretty good. This is about 40 miles west of Fargo. So as far as crops goes, these are soybeans here. Wow, that's quite a jolt. These are soybeans. Uh, there's also corn. That's basically the main crops that are being put in these silos. And uh, often the, the, the full trains are then sent to the coast. The entire contents put on a freighter. As you can see, this is a lot of grain. Or soybeans or corn that you can put on this train right here. here. North Dakota countryside. So it's getting a lot later in the day and the train is still just very far distance from anything resembling civilization out here. I think the next stop should be Minot. And I'm not sure how close it is. Obviously, there's no way to tell from any of this scenery. We're still in soybean country. Just rows after rows after rows. And the train still ain't to the next town. There's been some lame stops going on. So, um, probably be arriving at Minot at some point in the dark. It's always hard to have a specific time or schedule with these trains because you never know when these stupid stops are going to happen. What's going on? Stove the hobo. Fast forward a few hours. Out here on the, uh, basically the edge of town, Minot. And I'm kind of frustrated. I've been basically walked all the way out here from down by the train tracks looking for any place that sells beer. And there's nothing, because it's Sunday or some crap. I mean, why do you think I got off the train to just come see another you know, town with a bunch of roughnecks driving huge Dodge Ram trucks around? So I guess I'll have to wait till tomorrow. It's a major gig against this place. You think this rough Dakotas wouldn't, you know, have an issue with me buying a beer at 10:30 on a Sunday? I'm kind of flipping out because I don't really have the money to go to a bar. Yeah, I'm kind of annoyed. I don't have the money to go to a bar. I've only got 40 bucks in cash to get back to Montana. So I'm thinking it's just going to be dry night back at the campsite by the train tracks. So this is Minot, the 22nd of September. It's still pretty nice temperature, it's about 70 degrees. I'm right here at the BNSF yard office. 
we're in the Kuchins right now. This westbound uh, General Manifest freight train. Uh, as you can see, it's a pretty reasonable yard. I mean, there's no security. Right down there by the end of that bridge kind of thing is a good place to wait. As far as the city goes, it's not terribly unpleasant. It'd be nice if there was a bigger river through here. Got the nice autumn leaves starting up here. Then here to the north, uh, you got some hills, trees, so it's it's not as barren and desolate as people think of no, most of North Dakota. We're fairly close to Williston, where basically the back in oil uh, region, the center of it is right there. That's about 100 miles from here, so a lot of people live there. Uh, actually, a lot of people, I should say, live here and then commute there. It's kind of a one week on, one week off kind of a job. So there's a lot of big Macho Man trucks driving around, roughnecks in them. Right, well, that's pretty much my knot for you. It's not a whole lot to see here. Um, definitely want to point out, if you're enamored by all that uh, oil boom going on and thinking of making your 100 or 150,000 a year starting out, just remember these towns up here, there's nothing going on. And it's gonna be a struggle to spend that much money. I mean, you know, if you're into a smaller kind of town kind of place, no mountains, skiing, lakes, any of that, then uh, might not, might be worth it. Otherwise, I'd say definitely consider carefully. So now we've kind of starting to get into the the back in crude oil region here. It's about 15 miles out of Minot. Right here you got a huge tanker train getting refilled at this facility here. It's a lot of construction, a lot of stuff going on in the area. It's important to stay down in the daytime. There's workers everywhere. There's guys like Farmer Ben right here. Even Farmer Ben, he might have a cell phone. So it's kind of hard to like enjoy the quote-unquote scenery out here with all these workers.
Glasgow, I believe. So this is Glasgow or Glasgow or however you say it. And uh, you know, if you're, you don't have the budget to go to Glasgow, Scotland, I guess you could come out here because uh, it's not quite as far and it's definitely a lot less exciting. There's like nothing going on here. Um, I'm kind of wondering why I got off. I did manage to find some beer. There's like a major mosquito infestation going on right now, even in September. I mean, if you look, all these bastards. I've got about 200 bites on my legs from these things over the last couple days. So it's a, it's a pleasant little town. It's, it's too hot in the summer. It's way too cold in the winter, but you've got to ask yourself, what is going on when this setting, you're getting swarmed? with mosquitoes. Look at my leg. Look at all of them. Go to hell! It's just not worth it, folks. I don't know what's going on, but I cannot recommend getting off the train here. Uh, swarmed. Absolutely mother frickin' swarmed with bugs is what's going on. Additionally, pretty much, I, what's the point of the town? I don't know. You got this grain elevator. You got this bar. I'd love to show you some more about Glasgow, but you know, save the time, go to Glasgow, Scotland. It might actually be exciting and you won't get incinerated with mosquitoes, hopefully. Out. Oh, thank goodness. Please God, stop at the depot. I, I don't care what this train is, I've got to get out of here. It's about 10 p.m., maybe nine actually. I should probably duck so he doesn't see me. It's infested with mosquitoes. I gotta get out of here. Why is this train not slowing down? No! Well, you know, I was hoping to do a little bit more in Glasgow. A little like Scottish theme, you know, how the middle of the Badlands of Montana has somehow got a Scottish name. But the mosquitoes are so out of control. For some reason, it's just time to get out of here. It's 10 p.m. on September 23rd. I'm heading west. Darkest hours of the night. Stoby, Jim Kenobi, out! Park with these pretty decent peaks up here at the top of the pass, Marias Pass, and now we're starting to head down. Uh, Whitefish is about 50 more miles to the woods, so it's a welcome relief from those bugs to be here. Uh, things have really cooled off. Definitely going to need a jacket when I get out of this sleeping bag.
Basically the entrance to Whitefish and the end of our episode on the High Line, Fargo to Whitefish. Coming right into the Whitefish yard here. As you can see, this is probably the top, it's probably the top spot, you know, on the whole line to get on and off. We've got beautiful mountains, lake, there's a nice town up here too. So I'm just gonna wait a little longer than bail off and conclude the trip in Whitefish. Yeah, so there's a ski resort and there's a lot of kind of yuppie, new, nouveau fashion kind of stuff going on here. There's a lot of wealth. Um, I would say Whitefish is probably good as far as the recreational opportunities. And as far as the rest of it, it's a bit expensive for a lot of the stuff. And it's a lot of just kind of white, wealthy yuppies who live here. So you got the Amtrak Depot right here. And wow, look at how easy that is. Here's Whitefish Lake. Just a short walk from where you get off the train. See right over there, stack train. Pulling in. Folks, this concludes our episode of Fargo to Whitefish on the High Line. Covered about a thousand miles on Burlington Northern Santa Fe. Moving on to the Badlands. Seen a lot of mountains recently in the last day. And just a lot of flatlands and other stuff. So uh, it's an interesting route, why not the most exciting on the entire country. Thank you.